Welcome to the Grow Daily podcast. I am your host Piyush Agarwal and all of you are listening to the 7th episode of this brand new series. I'm so glad that I'm able to chug along and create these episodes every single day for you. Like I said in the beginning, this is a challenge that I have taken up in 2019 and I hope that I will be able to deliver it for all of you. So thank you so much for listening and also sending me some of your comments. I received some of your emails and it was great to see that the episodes are really helping you. I would love to hear more though. So do let me know what do you want me to cover? What are the different aspects that you are struggling with when it comes to your business and I will try to cover them in one of my future episodes. You can write to me at hello at the rate piushagarwal.com. That is h e l l o hello at the rate piushagarwal.com. So now let's get on with the show. We are going to continue our discussion from the last episode which was around social media. We spoke about what should be your social media strategy and how you can go about building one if you don't have one already. In today's episode, we are going to talk about your social media goals. Sounds familiar? Well, we did speak about goals an episode before, and in this episode we are going to find out how we can make whatever we learned in those two episodes work for us. It's important for you to work smart and not work hard, but at the same time, it's important for you to have a direction in how and where you're progressing. So, when we talk about social media, the first very important question is to know why social media is important for your business. Yes, we are again back to a why question. It's important for you to know this because only then you will be able to put in the right kind of efforts and you will know why you should be doing something or why you shouldn't be doing something for a lot of businesses social media is still not that important for example let's say you're a b2b business yeah it would be great for you to have a social media following and build a brand around uh, on the social media but then it's not that important for you your channels of marketing your brand would be very different from the usual facebook twitter instagram uh, you may be approaching LinkedIn more seriously than all of these other profiles and so on. So make sure that you know why you should be spending your time and money and energy on social media. And more than money, time is the most important factor because social media takes a lot of nurturing and a lot of effort. And unless you are very clear of why you are doing something and how it's helping your business, it's not worth putting in that kind of effort. Right? So once you are clear that your social media is important for your business and you've already done what we talked about in the last episode that is built your social media strategy you need to have goals set just like your business goals you need to have set goals for your social media as well these are the goals that you will be able to measure your progress against and also based on your goals you will be able to make decisions of what kind of things and steps you need to take when you are promoting content on those social media profiles a quick reminder when i am talking about goals i am still referring to the smart goals we spoke about in the fifth episode that is a goal needs to be specific measurable achievable realistic and timeline bound now based on what i am talking about you may be thinking that really are social media goals that important to have or um you are already tracking your followers you already know that you know you need to increase your followers every other day and that's what you're working towards so isn't that your goal well not really uh followers are just one of the metrics that are easily available and it's the most accessible one that you can track but most of the times your social media follower count is not the right metric to track to know whether your efforts are really paying off and whether your business is doing well you may be adding zillions of followers every day but it's kind of useless if none of them are really buying anything from your business having these goals is also great for your marketing teams in case you have one because having these goals set and agreed upon makes it very clear for them as to what they are working towards it helps them in making decisions of what kind of content they should be posting and how they should be engaging with the audience just because there are certain metrics set out way before they started planning and working on it and 
We have just started a brand new year. So this is the best time for you to create your goals if you haven't already. So all of you must be thinking, that's great Piyush, but how are we going to go about this? Well, worry not. In fact, just yesterday, I was in a discussion with one of my travel clients who I consult with and I helped the team define their 2019 marketing goals. So we can use their goals as an example for you to get an idea of how you can go about identifying the goals that you need to set for your team and what they should be, right? So moving on. Firstly, I would like to talk about brand awareness. I think this should be the biggest goal that you would like to achieve from social media. After all, that's why you're spending all of this time here, right? So you need to be able to measure how your brand awareness is increasing. This exactly is something that you may already be doing, but it's important for you to have it out there and have a count for it. By brand awareness, I would like to say how many more people are finding about your brand or are discovering your brand and actually uh, liking your pages or following your accounts on Instagram and things like that. These are the easiest metric to track. And at the same time, uh, while it's not the only metric we should track, it's not like you should be leaving them out. So go to all your social media profiles and make a note of your current uh, count of followers, subscribers, or whatever you would like to call it. Once you have them jotted down, now you need to set your goals of what you want to achieve in what kind of timeline. For example, for this particular team, Instagram and Facebook are the most important social media networks. Of the two, their Instagram follower count is pretty low. So this year, they want to spend more energies in growing that. And that's how we came up with the right numbers to set our goal at. One, obviously, we needed to make sure that it's realistic at the same time it's challenging. And, at, and there's a time bound. So the timeline that we took for setting all of these goals was the whole of 2019. So we are looking at a one year timeline to achieve these goals. So for the Instagram count, we went for a 5x number of what their current count was, just because it's that important for them. For Facebook, we went for double the count. They have a lot of people following them on Facebook and it made sense for us to double the count and it still looks challenging. So go around the team and come up with the number that makes sense for your businesses. Again, these numbers are sort of arbitrary and sort of wishful thinking, but at the same time, choose a number that seems challenging and ambitious. At the same time, they are not completely out of the way. So you need to keep it realistic at the same time challenging for the team so the team is motivated to actually meet the numbers. After brand awareness, it's important for us to now start thinking beyond the follow account. Like I said, that's the most accessible metric. However, it's the most misleading one as well. We need to find metrics that really tell us how our business is doing and whether we are growing our business or not. One way of identifying these metrics for your business is by checking out the analytics reports available with your social media tool. Something like the Facebook insights or Twitter analytics or even the Instagram reports. You can check these and find out which are the metrics that are available there and that you care about for your business. That way, you already have a metric that is being measured very easily and you can make it part of your overall uh, marketing goals. Moving on, the next metric to track is website traffic. Most likely, you as a business have a website of your own that you use for selling or even brand awareness or just letting people know more about your products and services. Well, it's important that your social media strategy is generating more traffic to your website, to your business. So this is another metric that you can track. Make sure that you have Google Analytics enabled on your website to be able to track this. So go check your current uh, website traffic and then add a certain number that you would like to increase it to. For this particular travel company, we went for three times the website traffic that they have today over the course of the year. Um, that's because website is another focus area that they want to uh, increase traffic on, especially because that's where they want to start selling more trips via. They do have other mediums through which they sell their travel deals and travel trips. However, they want to increase the traffic to website so that they can have more organic sales and less uh, sales where they require to push it. Now, moving on, the next topic is lead generation. This is a crucial one. 
all your social media marketing needs to generate leads for you. Now these leads can also be via your website and you can easily measure it again with Google Analytics. You can set out goals on Google Analytics that will help you track how many leads are getting generated via your social media traffic. But if website is not where you generate leads from, you need to identify what's the way that somebody can reach out to your business and actually buy something from you, right? Please make a note that a lead is not exactly someone who has purchased something from your customer. Lead generation is more about how many people get interested in your services and actually get in touch with you via email, via website, via phone call, whatever medium works for you to inquire about your services. Because that's the first step of making the sale. Get somebody interested in your business and in what you do. So set a number of uh, leads that you would like to generate through your social media efforts and put a number to that. These can be based on what you think is uh, again, achievable, but at the same time, challenging for you to create, right? The other thing that we did for the travel company was we wanted to set up a particular conversion rate. We wanted to have, uh, be able to calculate an ROI on whatever effort is going and how much, how much money is that uh, effort really leading to, to understand what the ROI we are getting from social media. And that's why what we went ahead and did was we set out a particular number of sales that we would like to get purely via social media. There are other channels as well through which this particular business acquires customer and they want to make sure that their social media is actually generating these X number of customers for them. So for both social, uh, social media networks like Facebook and Instagram, we set a particular number out. These numbers can be monthly or it can be set for the whole year, whatever timeline works for you and the team. In this case, we went for the year because that's what the team wanted. More importantly, we agreed that these customers should be organic in nature. Now, this travel company spends quite a lot on Facebook and Instagram ads. Now, any of those ads converting into a customer is not exactly the kind of uh, conversion that we would be tracking against this goal because we are already spending money uh, to acquire that customer and that sh that kind of a ROI should be a completely separate calculation. In this case, we are talking about the usual social media uh, efforts that we are putting in by sharing content and there should be customers who discover us on social media on their own or uh, via other uh, friends and then they find out our services and they actually buy something. That's the kind of conversion that we are looking for. The next goal is sort of personal and sort of specific to this travel company. They wanted to experiment with different kinds of uh, posts, different kinds of content that they share online. So they went ahead and even set a goal for the number of videos that they want to create this year because video is where social media is heading. You see a lot more videos on Facebook, on Instagram and all the others. So they want to make sure that they are creating more video content this year than they have done in the previous years. So they went ahead and even put a number out as a goal for that. Moving on, you need to figure out what else is important for your business. The other metric that we went ahead and we put out for the travel company was 10,000 tags across social media. Now this is somewhat connected to the brand awareness topic that we spoke about earlier. However, in this case, we wanted to set out a number and say we want uh, the customers, the followers of uh, on our social media to be tagging us in different places, uh, to be putting our name out when they are sharing content. So the team wanted to make sure that they are influencing people and creating a community where the community loves the brand back and talks about it often. And this sort of is what engagement is also about. We need to be engaging with our customers in a way that they want to speak to us more often, tell us more things, but even when uh, we are offline, or also tell more people about us. So we went ahead and we said we would like to have 10,000 tags from our customers all through the year uh, in order to say that, yes, we have been successful in generating enough of an interest by people and have them talk about us. Finally, we also went ahead and added a PR metric. If that's important for your brand, you should as well. Even though everybody is on social media, there's a lot of merit 
to be mentioned and talked about in the press. There's still a lot of people who are uh, reading newspapers, who are reading other blogs, uh, who are watching news online on and listening to on radio. Now, because this travel company is a public brand, they see a lot of value uh, in having media talk about them, in having their brand mentioned in different publications. And that's why the marketing team went out and set particular goals on how many times or how many initiatives they would like the PR, uh, media, press to be mentioning them about. And that's about it. In just about a 30 to 40 minutes discussion, we ended up rounding up these metrics that everybody was super excited about that seems like things that would help us get closer to the business goals that we have set out for 2019. And most importantly, they are all goals that can be measured and tracked progress against. So with a one year timeline, if at any point of the time, it feels like we are not doing too well for a particular metric, we can easily uh, change the way some things are being done to impact that. And that's very important. It's not just about setting out goals. It's also very important for you to be able to track progress and give your team or yourself feedback on how you're doing against those metrics. Um, there were some other metrics that the team took, but they were very specific to the businesses. So don't stop at what we spoke about. Go ahead and find newer metrics that your business cares about that matters to your business and make sure you make a note of them and get excited about them. Now, once you have identified all of your metrics and set all of your goals, it's important that you follow this next step. You go ahead and print out all of these goals in big bold letters and put it somewhere you will be looking at it every day. Most likely around your workplace or across the office for your whole team to see. It's very important that you get to see these metrics on a regular basis for you to be psyched about it and for you to be able to keep reminding yourself that you need to do certain things to meet these goals that you have decided that you have chosen yourself. And with that, we have come to an end of this episode. I know we went a tad bit longer, but I hope you found everything that we spoke about helpful. Without wasting any further time, go ahead and create that social media goal list today and put it in front of you so that you can start working and crushing it right away. This was Piyush Agarwal and you have been listening to the Grow Daily Podcast where we talk about how you can make sure that you are growing your business every single day. Signing off, have a good day ahead.